Yo, what's up YouTube? And today we're gonna have a bit of educational content. So recently I finished Quest the Guide from Peacekeeper, which gives you a bunch of XP and $30,000, but most importantly, this quest is required for Kappa. I think this quest is definitely not the easiest in the game, especially if you try to do it solo. So I will uh, tell you different tips and tricks. I will talk about every single map uh, and how to do this quest solo. That's exactly how I done it. And after we're done with all the theory, I will share my own experience. So first of all, when you're starting the quest, you need to go to different maps in specific order, and I will explain why. So first of all, we're gonna go to Factory. The reasoning is that this map is uh, very small, the gameplay is very fast, you can go in and out in like 30-40 seconds, and if you manage to get a quick kill and loot a player or a scav, you're set to go. So if you die on Factory first, you don't really lose anything, that's just an additional 30 seconds of your gameplay. The second map we're going to is Labs, and the reasoning is very simple. First of all, there are plenty of high-level players playing Labs, uh, the map is very known for cheaters, and thirdly, I think most of the players aren't really that experienced with Labs, and uh, doing it first is actually decent. The only counter-argument which I have is that Labs is very expensive, and uh, you might keep dying on it and lose keycards, yes. But wouldn't it be even worse if you done all the maps and then you go to Labs as the last map and then you die to a cheater? Huh? The third map which we're gonna go to is Reserve. The reasoning is pretty similar that uh, there are plenty of high level players, there are also vetters which might spawn on different sides of the map as well as in the bunker, and there's also Gluhar which might shoot you through the walls from a very far distance. So the map is pretty risky, not as risky as Labs, and that's exactly the reason why we're doing it third. And in my humble opinion, the rest of the maps doesn't really matter, you can do it in your own preference or follow my one. Alright, let me take you from map to map and explain how we're gonna play each of the maps. So, Factory is very simple. Uh, since the map is very random and you might spawn in any of the uh, spawns, you should just check for the closest spawn for a PMC, kill him, loot him, and then extract. Typically, that's enough. If you kill one PMC or one scav and uh, touch him, which is uh, coming close, clicking F to open their inventory, typically that XP is enough for getting the survival status. So you get one kill, loot and extract. Our second map is labs. My personal advice is no matter where you spawn, you should try to get into the technical level, which is uh, tunnels as fast as you can for a few reasons. First of all, it's not that busy in the beginning of the raid. Secondly, there are plenty of buttons uh, for different elevators, which you can press to spawn raiders. And after spawning those raiders, you need to kill them, loot them and extract. Or you might just wait for 7 minutes to get the survived status and then extract while uh, camping in one of the toilets or something. And there is another cheesy method which I will mention further on in the video. Next map is gonna be reserve. So, first of all, uh, I personally think that you should try to avoid areas where Gluhar spawns. So, it's the train station and the helicopter area. And if you spawn on the top left of the map, you should try to get to the central area as fast as you can. Maybe get a couple of uh, cheeky scav kills in here and extract all the Red Rebel Extraction. If you spawn on the other side of the map, I typically go into the uh, marked room, loot it, loot the nearby rooms, get into the tunnels, try to kill some raiders, especially right now since BSG buffed the raider spawn, they literally spawn nearly every single raid, especially if you activate the power. Killing raiders is a bit more risky, but if you get one or two kills, you might uh, just instantly leave without looting them, which will be a safer option. And I typically go through Red Rebel Extraction as well. Next map for me is Interchange, simply because I really hate the map. I don't like going inside the mall, it's very dark, risky, sketchy, I don't know, I don't like it. All right. So the safest way to play interchange is actually playing outside the mall, not going in. And uh, one of the ways of completing the quest is uh, being around this area, around the power station. Wait, this is the power station? My bad. That's the power station, yep. Yeah. So playing around the power station, waiting for the scavs to spawn, killing the scavs, and using the uber extraction. If you don't have uber extraction, you use your main extraction, which is either Emercom or uh, Road to Railroads. Road to Railroad? Oh, you get it. The next map on my list is Shoreline. Playing Shoreline is very simple. No matter where you spawn, you focus on killing these sniper scavs right here in this area, right under the resort. They spawn here, I think, 99% of the time. So you look for the rock, you kill uh, one of them, maybe two of them. Uh, and typically, getting one headshot on that sniper scav and looting one or two boxes is enough XP. So you come to this area, you kill the sniper scavs, then you go towards the lighthouse extraction, which is um, in this area. And right here, 
there is a couple of boxes which you can loot next to this rock right here. You loot the boxes, you take the items, and you're ready to leave. And that's exactly what I done. And the next map on my list is Customs. Customs is actually a pretty tricky map, and maybe I should have uh, listed it above the previous maps, maybe it should be my fourth map. Nevertheless, um, there are plenty of different spawns on Customs, and I think the area which you need to avoid is Dorms, because it's a high PvP area. Unless, you're, unless you spawn very close to Dorms, then you can uh, go in, check for scavs, um, loot a couple of crates and extract through Uber, which is very fast and efficient. So killing one scav, touching him and extracting through Uber, it might literally take you like 50-60 uh, seconds to end this raid. But if you don't spawn close to dorms, my advice is to avoid it. If you spawn on the right side of the map, my advice is to activate the power for the new construction area where you can extract using the factory key and go to the new construction area and look for scavs. One or two kills and you're ready to leave. If you spawn on the left side of the map, my advice is to go towards the bridge, uh, cross it, either through the bridge or through the water. Water is typically safer. And look for the scavs in this area. Uh, very likely you are gonna find one, kill him, loot him, and then you should try to extract either through old gas station, because it's gonna be uh, one of your available extractions, if, it, if it's actually open. And if it's not, you just go further and use your usual extraction, which is the B11. And last but not least, Woods. My advice for Woods is very simple. If you spawn on the right side of the map, you go towards your extraction, which is outskirts, and you play around this area and you look for the scav house. Typically, there are scavs spawning around this area during the whole raid, so you wouldn't have any problems killing one, two, three, four, whatever of them, getting enough XP and extracting through outskirts. If you spawn on the left side of the map, um, you're very likely to spawn close to central area. So my advice is to go towards the sniper rock, which is right next to the Sam wheel. It always spawns one sniper scav. You kill that sniper scav, kill that sniper scav on the scav rock, loot him, and then you extract either through roadblock or another roadblock. All right, we're done with the maps. Now I'm gonna talk about which weapons I used and why, and I'll give you a cheesy method to complete this quest. So the cheesy method is very simple. You need to play as a duo or a whole team, uh, not for the reason of safety, but that as well, but due to the fact that you can actually kill your teammate, take his gear and extract, and you will get enough XP for surviving. So if you spawn on labs right next to the extraction, you can simply bop your teammate in the head, take his gear, and leave within 10 seconds. And that will be enough XP for getting the survived status. Lots of people might think that playing at nighttime is actually a good idea, since there is less players, and uh, people tend to loot stuff, and don't really engage in PvP. From my own perspective, I'm thinking that if you play nighttime, especially on Shoreline, woods and customs, you're more likely to meet a cheetah which is farming cultists. So from my perspective, it's not very a safe way to do maps at the night time. And yeah, it's completely up to you, but I personally don't recommend that. So let's talk about the weapons which I use. Uh, my main weapon for most of the race was a unsuppressed AKM for a few simple reasons. First of all, uh, if you assemble an AK, uh, a decent AK, it has very low recoil, so it's very easy to fight people on close and medium range, as well as scavs. Um, and secondly, it's using 7.62 caliber, and if you buy BP bullets, you can easily pan uh, level 3, 4, and sometimes level 5 helmets, which include Alton, and generally these bullets have uh, very high damage as well. So I played with AK on all maps except Woods, where I used a Thermal m one I believe, even though that's an RSS, I used a Thermal m one And uh, the simple reason for bringing Thermal to Woods is that Woods is a very open map, where people don't really tend to make lots of noise and uh, you will not hear your enemies until they engage you and with the help of thermal you might spot them on a large distance as well as it's very easy to spot scavs, blowing them uh, and extract. You can also think that it might be worth it bringing thermal to all the maps and uh, it's tough to disagree but I don't think thermal is going to be that efficient on other maps compared to woods. And the last advice which I'm going to give you is going to be very simple. Try to play it safe. Don't focus on fighting players, don't focus on fighting bosses or raiders, you need to play it safe. So when I was doing the quest, I was trying to avoid PvP as much as possible. Therefore, the raids which you're gonna see soon, right now, my own experience, they're not gonna be filled up with PvP. However, you can learn and uh, see which routes I'm taking and maybe take the same ones. So yeah, I hope you like this tutorial and if you're gonna try guide, I hope you're gonna complete it from the first try. And let's see my raids now. Whoa, wow.
interesting movement. <laughs> like, he kind of went down, but he went then. Alright, never, never mind. Never mind. Is that behind me? It is behind me. Fat loot come to Papa. How many maps remaining? Six. Six. Factory is always first. Then it's labs. Then it's reserve. And then the rest doesn't really matter too much. I got a marked key for Twitch Rivals Armband. Could have gotten anything better for Twitch Rivals Armband? I know, you probably could have gotten like three, maybe four of them. I mean, I don't know. What's the value of Twitch Rivals Armband? Like six million, eight million ish? <laughs> I just wore mine. Uh. Fat loots of the red room, huh? Can I? Ah, uh, no, you have to do it vice versa. You have to open, then you have to swap. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was trying to search the thing and open the vial at the same time. But I done it in the wrong, uh, in the wrong order. Yeah, what's up, JC? Damn, labs is scary quiet today. Balaclava. Alright, offices seem to be closed. Maybe I'll get something juicy from there. Am I done with college? I am done with college, yeah. I graduated. Morning life. Hmm... I actually wonder if there's anybody else on the map. Hmm. Yeah, no loot, no players, no nothing. Time to go. Is it possible to spawn in labs alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is it happens way too often.
Yeah, loot is like really propagan. I guess we got unlucky with the um, uh, loot pool this time. And typically, if you don't if you don't find shit on one side of the map, you're very unlikely to find good stuff on the other side of the map too. The angst. Did I just hear somebody use a key? Yeah, it's it's an old bug, yeah. Still happens. <laughs> Clipping it? Nah, nah, no need this one. I mean, I know, I know what I've heard. What's up, Grinit? Still alive, yeah? Still alive. Bullets. Somebody just swallowed something. Did you hear that? Bro, what it what are these sounds? They scare me. They fucking do. They swallowed, yes, they swallowed. They couldn't spit out, so they had to swallow. Well, seems like there is no raiders this time. What is guide? Guide is the quest during which you need to survive on all the maps in a row. And if you don't, you need to restart from beginning. I'm trying to fix my sleeping schedule, Tefesk. It's it's 10 a.m. for me. Like I shouldn't be asleep. I should be awake now. And I am awake now.
Hmm. He <laughs> doesn't fit. Alright, so what can we do here? I can probably just check the... Ah, but there could be another PMC right there. But I can, I can check power for scaffs and the car extraction. It's a decent strat, but not the safest one, because somebody could have spawned there. Yeah. Also, I don't think scaps spawn early on the power station, do they? They spawn quickly? Yeah, but not beginning of the raid, like a bit into the raid. Alright, there is no Uber. Oh, there is Uber. Okay. <laughs> Should I just go up and try to snipe? <laughs> Imagine. Wow. Wowie. Uh, hello? <laughs> Can I get an item, please? That'd be really nice of your game. Do a cash run. Mm. Oh, I heard the scav spawn. I think we can go, we can go back, chat. Unless it wasn't a glitch sound from the other side of the map, there should be scavs in power now. Hello? The, bro, you shouldn't even be able to see me. They're so aggressive. Jesus. Oh, that's where he's at. I think there was another one. Like one more. Anyway, this XP is clearly enough, so we're gonna leave now. Oh my lord, that gave me a mini heart attack. Je Jesus, bro. <laughs> Is that a G Fuel top, this? No, it's just... No, it's just the usual... Um... What's the name? Cup. 
Tips to become a chat, play Tarkov every single day of the week for 12 hours. Be a no-lifer like me. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, janitor. No worries. I don't really know, Cassie. I'll stay for a while. <clears throat> I don't really know what's going to be the fastest way to do shoreline. Probably I'll need to go and kill uh, sniper's calves and then go back to the lighthouse extraction. I think that's going to be the, su the the fastest and the easiest way. Uh, I graduated, Cassie. No water, all powder. You want to tell me I'm just I'm just eating from the cup, not drinking it? <laughs> all powder, no water. No water. Go to Scavs by Rock closer. The thing is, I don't think there will be Scavs by Rock by the time I go there. They spawn a bit later, so I don't think they would. They will be there by the time I reach I reach the Rock. I mean, if they are, nice. If they aren't, I'll just go further. Machine there. Well, well, I went too far, I went too far. Congratulations, thank you. Double loot boxes on the rock. I mean, uh, killing one scav and looting one scav is generally enough. So, and looting the boxes is not going to be enough by itself. I'll need to get some kills. Yeah, I don't think there are any scavs here yet. Sniper scavs should be my best call. Killing two of them and looting two boxes behind me is enough. That's the problem, I don't see the second one. What's the goal of the guide? You need to survive on all the maps in a row. If you die, you need to restart. One headshot is enough? No, no, it's not. Mm -mm. That's enough though? It's not. No, one, trust me chat. One headshot is not enough. I don't think so. I was about to sneeze and then... 
And then my body was like, nope, you're not sneezing, Axel. Do we have some quests? Yes, I'm doing I'm doing guide at the moment. The quest we need to, to survive. One headshot and touching Skia for XP is usually enough. Yes, but I can't touch these ones, can I? One headshot and touching is enough, yeah. But one headshot by itself? No. Yeah, but we don't have time to wait for seven minutes. We want to do it quick. I mean, yeah, for me, yeah, I'll be extracting it nearly at seven minutes, just a little bit early. But generally, you can do most of your raids faster, especially on factory and labs. Before the timer reaches seven minutes. Oh, did you? Do you have a favorite sport? Tennis. Tennis is my favorite sport. You know, I used to play tennis professionally for 10 years straight. That was a fun time. I actually wonder what would have happened if I uh, decided to become a professional um, tennis player. Like, keep being a professional tennis player instead of focusing on studies. Would have been pretty, pretty interesting. Orek Mazino, thank you so much for a whole year, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> and then Nikita released the FT, yeah. <laughs> I think you did the right thing for Ling Lingevity and physical health. Probably, yeah. But if you can be in like top 50, Tennis players, it's a lot of fun. And I did love the sport and I still do love it. I love the trainings and everything. Um, and they make so much money as well. Like if you look at how much money professional tennis players make, the ones which are in top 50, it's like, bro, it's super good. Joker, Rafa, Roger, Goats, they, they're like a special kind. Djokovic, Nadal and um, Federer, they're like, I don't know, bro. They're just legendary. A special 3 -um. But the thing is, I think they're going to retire soon, TM. All of them are getting old, Ex except, except Djokovic, maybe. How old is Djokovic, chat, if you don't mind me asking? I mean, it's not like you make bad money. You mean me now? No, I wouldn't say I'm making bad money. But what I'm making now versus what I could have been making if I was in a top 50 tennis player, like not even top 50, top 100, let's say. It's a day and night difference. Djokovic is 34. So Djokovic is the youngest one amongst them, right? Because I think Nadal is... Um, what, like 30... Uh, 38 or something 37 maybe and um federer is 40 i think he turned 40 not that long ago Thirty-five. Mm -mm. okay okay But the thing is, there is so many s super talented Russian tennis players which are playing. Like, literally, all top players are Russian. Like, literally all of them. Zverev, Medvedev. Because I don't know how much you play... You, you pay in Australia for a... Um, 
year of gymming. But I think the gym which is next to me, I think they charge like... Like $300 per year, roughly. And that includes maybe like $400 per year. And that includes gym, sauna, and, uh, and the swimming pool. $20 a week sums of 40. Mm. I never like super expensive gyms. I don't know. I just I just feel like it's not worth it. You know, the most expensive gyms is just like... Uh, I don't know. You pay $120 per month. Wow. That's very expensive. Maybe your gym is like in the central area or something. I don't know, but that's very expensive. I also don't really know where you're from. That might, that might make a difference. Gym, therapy, sauna, pool. $50 a month. That's good. That's good. I remember when I was in UK, I was paying for a gym. I don't remember the name, but it was like... A semi-automated gym, like they didn't have any guards or whatever. You just get a uh, code on your phone whenever you go in. And they were the type of gyms which were working 24 hours. I think I was paying like, what, like... 20 pounds per month, maybe? Australian here, I paid 24 bucks. Okay. Oh, players on the spawn. Woofers, woofers. Gym group? I don't remember the name. I, I don't. I'm sorry. You have the best accuracy out of all the people I watch, bro. It's nuts. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you so much for the second month, White Sock. Thank you. Hundred dollars per year in Copenhagen and called Alex Fitness. Oh yeah, I have, I have I have Alex Fitness next to me as well. I've never been there though. Maybe, maybe like just once. My my gym is different. But yeah, Alex Fitness is a really is a really big group in Russia. They have plenty of gyms in in St. P. How many maps left? Only one? Yes, if you <laughs> if we don't jinx it, just one, yeah. We oh no. No, no, is that Sturman? Please no, bro. I ain't here for the smokes. There is also a guy camping with a Mosin. It is Sturman, yep. KW. There is a guy camping with a Mosin, like right on his spawn. I have no idea why. But he's been there for quite a while. And it doesn't make too much sense. Have to find him. Um, for sure, Kuri. For sure. As well as he can win against me. He's a good player. Scav killing? Maybe. Maybe he's just sitting there waiting for them to spawn next to the house, yeah. <laughs> Imagine if this Mosin guy just checks around, sees me and one taps me in the face. Alright, he's dead now.
And he was killing scavs indeed, yeah. Tasks, the guide, complete.